So hello aspirants, welcome to another session of Indian Forestry. In this particular session, we are going to study the forest resources utilization. It is included under your paper 2 section B. So let's start. The first topic is your minor forest produce. You must have studied about the minor forest produce or non-timber forest produce during the civil services examination preparation. The similar concept is over here, but just in detail. So firstly understand what is major forest produce. So timber, small wood or the fuel wood are included under your major forest produce and any product apart from these major forest produce are going to be included under your minor forest produce. So minor forest produce are also called as your non-timber forest produce NTFP. Now in the Manikandan book, there is a separate table that has been given for different types of NTFP. You have to memorize at least 10 or 15 try to memorize 15 different types of NTFP because sometimes in the examination UPSC generally ask to write 6 NTFP, 7 NTFP or sometimes even 15 NTFP non-timber forest produce. They don't only ask to write about the non-timber forest produce but also they wanted you to write the name of the tree species from which that particular non-timber forest produce is derived. So sometimes what they used to do is they'll say that shellac is there or lac is there or tannin is there so they wanted you to write the name of the different tree species at least five different tree species from which that particular non-timber forest produce has been derived so try to remember at least four to five different name of the tree species for each non-timber forest produce it is a very easy thing but just you have to memorize this particular table every day so that once the examination is going to be arrived you should be very suitable in writing the names of the non-timber forest produce as well as the trees. Now the next topic is your medicinal plants or trees. So another table has been given in the same chapter of Manikantan book of different sort of medicinal plants. At least remember 10 different names of the medicinal plants or trees. Remember the names in the scientific form as well as the common names because sometimes UPSC has asked both to write the scientific name as well as the common name. Memorize those things, at least 10 names, as well as try to remember one or two properties of those medicinal plants or trees. So a separate table has been given in the book. Try to memorize from that particular table itself. The next one is your tannin. Tannin is a kind of a non-timber forest produce. We are going to study a little bit about what is this. So it is a sort of chemi chemical substance which is used to convert the raw hides into leather. Okay, so the kind of leather that we use is in our daily lives that are generally made from the raw hides of the animals and how they are converted from raw hides into leather is with the help of this tannin. So the raw hides are first treated with water, then lime and sodium sulphide is used to remove the impurities, then the enzyme and ammonium sulphate as well as the tannin which is derived from the tree species are utilized in order to produce the leather. So this is the process. Now what sort of tree species are used to get tannin? You have to study from the Manikandan books table. In that particular book, the table has been given. So just study from that particular thing. What sort of tree species are utilized to produce tannin? Then beedi leaves. So over here I have wrote five different names of those trees from which these beedi leaves are used to be derived. So Diospyros melanoxylon is there, then Diospyros tomentosa is there, Butea monosperma, Ficus religiosa and Shoria robusta. So such sort of names of at least five or six tree species you have to memorize for each non-timber forest produce. Now lac. So lac is a kind of a resin-like substance which is secreted by the insects that is your Lacifera laca. So Lacifera laca is the name of that particular insect species which is used to derive lac. So the host plant is Butea monosperma. So on this Butea monosperma this Lacifera laca is used to be found and then it produces the lac. What are the steps? So firstly the trees are planted in the coop system. We have already analyzed what is a coop system when we were studying the silvicultural systems that is your chapter 2. Then pruning is done then inoculation and then the last step is your collection and storage. So you just have to remember the name of these steps. You don't have to go in depth because UPSC hasn't ever asked about to write the steps how lac is obtained. But just you should 
remember the names of the steps so as to write if let's say 50 or 100 words has been come to write about the lack then at least you should have certain material on that lack process then shellac shellac is manufactured from the lac itself so the lac is purified further through heating and filtering and then you will obtain the shellac so the steps are like this firstly you are going to obtain the lac and then from the lac you have to do the cleaning then grading of that particular lac then extraction of the shellac is going to happen and then sheet lac formation is the last step so just remember the names of the steps then the difference between resin and gum what is a resin and what is a gum it has been asked in the upsc to differentiate between these two things both are non timber forest produce so we will go them one by one the first one is your gums so gum is formed through the disintegration of internal plant tissues this process is called as your gumosis that is the disintegration of your internal plant tissue is going to happen and the process is called as gumosis whereas in the case of resins it is formed in the resin cavity so there are resin cavities present in your timber present in the stem of a given tree and in that particular cavities resin is de getting deposited so the gum is soluble in water however the resins are insoluble in water the gum is insoluble in organic solvents for example like alcohol in alcohol the gums are not able to dissolve properly whereas in the case of resins they are soluble in the alcohols or in the organic solvents then just remember the name of the types like it is gum arabic gutti gum and gum karaya similarly in the case of resins hard resin is there oleo resin and gum resin is gum resin is another type of the resins then it is translucent and have amorphous flakes in the case of gums whereas in the case of resins it is brittle amorphous and transparent remember these differences between the resins and the gum because once it has already been asked it is possible that might be in the upcoming examination upsc will again repeat the same question so the next one is your kach and katha again it is a non timber forest produce so the extraction method of kach is like this the hardwood chips of acacia katechu are boiled then the liquid is stirred to arrive at the certain consistency this particular syrup is then cooled they are poured into the wooden frames and then they are cooled and then we are going to get kach in the case of katha we are going to use that hardwood chips of acacia katechu in which we are going to see the signs of kheer sa this is again boiled and the syrup that we are going to obtain is then cooled in the molds of sand and then katha is obtained so these are the different process the extraction process of your kach and katha then the next topic is felling and conversion so what is felling felling is the removal of trees from a forest or stand stand is again the different species of trees that are present in the forest region so that is the stand the definition of a stand so the removal of trees from a forest or stand is called as your felling the purpose is to meet industry demands or to meet the local demands or for the new silvicultural operations we wanted to let's say establish a new silvicultural set of operations so we wanted to remove the previous set of trees and then we wanted to establish the new set of trees so for that also felling is going to be done so what are the different types of fellings the first one is felling with your axe alone the second one is a felling with axe and the saw and felling with saw alone so it is pretty much obvious the name already suggests what is going to be happening over here like felling felling with axe alone so we are going to use just axe in order to cut the trees then felling with axe and saw so both are going to be used axe as well as saw and then felling with saw alone so you are going to use only saw in order to cut the trees so the next topic is conversion what is this conversion so generally when you are going to cut a tree you will see the timber like this so converting the timber from this circular shape to this square shape is called as conversion this is the only definition of this particular conversion and this is the concept now timber conversion or log making why we generally make logs or why we convert a long timber into smaller one so the main purpose behind this is we have to study so the first one is that for transportation so that the transportation should become easier that's why we make smaller logs the second one is sometimes the industry's requirement is like that they wanted to have small timbers and that's why we have to convert long timbers into smaller one then the third one is the to reduce the weight of the timber because if the timber is long then the weight is going to be very large 
However, if the timber is going to be smaller one, then the weight is going to get reduced. So in order to reduce the weight of the timber, we generally make logs and then to store them easily. Smaller logs can be stored very much easier as compared to the longer logs. So that's why we make smaller logs or we go for the log making. So the next is the transportation. How these timbers are transported from one place to another that we have to study. Firstly, we have to see the choice of mode. So various factors play crucial role in order to determine which, which mode we are going to utilize for the transportation. So the topography is one factor, time is another factor, then availability, then the loss and damage of the products, then cost and availability of transport facility. So these are the various factors which actually is going to play a crucial role in order to determine which mode of transportation we are going to use. Then what are the different modes of transportation? So land is one, through land you are going to transfer timber from one place to another, then water is another mode of transportation. Similarly, there is aerial ropeway is there and then the fourth one is the combination of the above three that is utilizing land, water as well as aerial ropeway. Then by land, there is again different sort of methods for example like carriage by man, carriage by animals, then carriage by carts, similarly dragging, rolling. You just have to remember the names. If you are not able to see this particular slide, you can refer the Manikandan book or if you will go through the slides or the PDF, then you will be able to see this particular what has been written over here. So the next one is what are the different modes of transportation through water itself. So first one is floating. The second one is rafting. The third one is through booms. The fourth one is wet slide and the fifth one is dry slides. So in the case of floating, what used to happen is we generally put the timber in the water or in the river itself. And with the river flow, the particular logs will get transported from one place to other. So that is your floating. In the case of rafting, we generally make different sort of rafts from the wood itself and then we place timbers on that wooden rafts and then we make them transport from one place to other. For example, over here in this diagram, you can see there is a log raft that has been made from the timber itself. Then there is timber rafts and then there is bamboo rafts. Though the diagram is not that much clear in this slide, but you can refer the book over there. You will see a proper image of log rafts as well as bamboo rafts. Then the next one is booms. So there are two different types of booms. The first one is based on use and the another one is based on design. In the case of based on usage, booms is divided into fixed boom and the floating boom. So fixed boom, it is going to be fixed in the river and when the timbers are going to come, they will get stopped by that fixed boom itself. And then the floatable boom means the boom is floating and then it is used to stop the logs or the timber that is coming from uphill to the downhill. In the case of, in the case of based on design, there is one way boom and the two way boom in over here in this diagram, you can see there is this two way boom. So a cross is made from the booms across the river and the timbers are going to come downwards from here and then they will be stopped. Over here, you can see the one way boom. So only one boom is utilized to cross the river. And then once a timber is going to come from uphill, it is going to be stopped from this particular boom, which is going to act as an ob obstacle. So the next one is a wet slide. When in the hilly regions, we generally don't have a proper river, but somehow a stream is present. Then we use this concept of the wet slide. So with the flow of stream, we transport the timbers from one place or from the uphill to, towards the downhill. In the case of dry slides, what happens is even the stream water is not available or let's say there is no water availability at all. At that point of time, we use the dry slide concept. So you just have to remember this particular diagram. And if they're going to ask right about the dry slides, you just make this diagram itself. That will be suffice. Then the next one is overhead transportation. So how does this overhead transportation works? Single ropes and double ropes. So with the help of single ropes, you are going to transfer the timber from one place to other. And in the double ropes, you will use the concept of double ropes and then the transferring takes place. That is the overhead transportation concept. In the case of storage of timber, there are certain types through which 
you are going to store the temper for example like wood log open storage so in the open place you will store the tempers then storage above ground that is above the ground you are going to store the tempers then storage under shade that is providing a proper shade to the tempers and then storing it and then the sawn timber storage this is another concept you just have to remember the names that's it they never have asked and uh, hardly they are going to ask even in the future this type of questions let's see some previous year questions so they have already asked about the five medicinal plants in 2022 in the 2021 you can see they have asked about ntfps so every alternative year they are asking about the ntfps so it is better to remember the names of ntfps as well as medicinal plants because these are very easy questions once you mug up the names of ntfps and medicinal plants this is a very easy question and uh, very easy to get marks also then in 2016 they have asked shellac tannin and resin we have already studied about it your work over here is to get at least name of five different tree species from manikandan book and remember the names of those tree species which are responsible for shellac tannin and resin so that's all for this session of your indian forestry in the next session we will see some more interesting topics regarding your indian forestry till then thank you